Love and marriage, <laughs> dirty dish. On today's episode, I've been replaced by an artificial intelligence microphone. I had nothing to do with this. I'm mind scooting over just a little to the left? No problem. Do you mind uh, scooting more to the left? <laughs> no problem. Just a, like another, <laughs> you're almost there. Wow, great. <laughs> Hello! And welcome back to What's the Safe Word? I'm Amp. I'm Mr. Christopher. And we've been together for far too long. No! Nine years. You are now my second longest relationship. Well, happy anniversary, Daddy. Thank you. What'd you get me? Uh, I got you leather, because that leather is the anniversary gift for nine years. Apparently the more hip nine year anniversary trend when you've gotten that far is leather. So it seems like the most appropriate episode for us to do, an episode about like ask a nine year relationship, which in gay years is like what? A hundred Like a hundred and twenty, I think. Yeah. Hi gay. It's been 84 years. Today we're gonna talk about love and marriage. Love and marriage, love and marriage. Okay, yep. Daddy sings the song because you know he probably will as a sound bite. Got that? See, I do know you. See, I do <laughs> you know don't you. don't have that. Yes, I do. <laughs> and then I then I even asked, does our editor even know what that show is? Oh, editor, I have a picture <laughs> of us together the first year we met in front of the Married with Children Fountain in Chicago. <gasps> that's true. Yeah. And I have a picture of the very first time we ever met that's definitely not appropriate for the YouTube video. <laughs> They're the same picture. But today we are answering all of your questions, whether they're invasive, intrusive, relationship related, or just quirky, about our relationship from the last nine years because technically we've known each other for a decade, but we're only in a relationship dating for like nine years. So without further ado, get that title card. Daddy, would you like to do the honors after nine years? Roll the title card. Is that how you do it? Yeah, good job. Okay, thanks. And Amp asks you guys for all your questions here. Doing the work as usual. I just announced it. Thank you. <laughs> what else but, do you well, want? No, but I <laughs> We have our strengths. Like, I do the dishes. You make them dirty. <laughs> Love and marriage, dirty dish. Also, your stove was on. You're welcome. Did you just make some something, like, in the stove, maybe? It was cold in here. See? Partnerships. Making sure your partners burn down their apartment. Why is there stocks in WD-40 in here? <laughs> So the first question, which comes from Pakiru, says, how did you guys meet? And I feel like that's the most appropriate way to start. So picture it now, let me, let me paint a picture. It was a partly cloudy autumn day. The sun was orange, the sea was blue, and it dawned on me that I had forgotten to return a library book, a very uh, in-depth smart library book to the library. If the library was IML. We met at IML, International School of <laughs> it was, um, I actually saw you from across the room. Uh huh. We were in the dealer's hall of IML. So think like Comic-Con, but it's wall-to-wall -wall goods, gears, and guys galore. And I see him doing bondage demos at what was the Mistress Leather booth. Yeah, I was tying boys up to draw them into the Mistress booth and then keep them there. <laughs> <laughs> Consensually, of course. But I was watching you do a bunch of demos, mm -hmm. kind of walking around the mart. I ended up buying some stuff for Mistress Leather, but then as I was buying it, I see somebody looking my way. Well, because you had skulked by like so, several okay. times. I, several times. <laughs> I was meandering. I was starting to get worried. <laughs> <laughs> Then you're like, hey, get over here. And like, who is that stalker with the nice And daddy gave me his best scorpion impression and said, hey, get over here. Yeah. And then tied me up with his rope. Um, again, we do have some lovely photos, which I'm sure we'll post on the social medias. Uh, we kicked it off. And what was your first impression of me? Young. Well, I was 20, what, four probably. Yeah. And I was coming out of another relationship. I, so I wasn't looking uh, at the time, uh, but I remember you're very, very hot and very, very nice. I couldn't tell if you were looking or squinting, like, or looking past me. Wow. Watching. But I will say, um, the very first night that we were planning to like meet up at a thing, uh, somebody did blow me off and never got back to me. I, okay, A, I didn't blow you off. You were dancing with your friends. No, 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 I was following you and you were actively, You were not following yeah, me. I saw you in the bar and was trying to find you and you were chasing after a friend who was too drunk and needed to get home. Well, that's true. Mm -hmm. But, so I was taking care of somebody else. And then that's why I never got mad at you, but I am gonna continue to air that dirty laundry because <laughs> you did leave me on red. 
<laughs> However, the next year, I actually called you. So I did have your number and we had been communicating and tied you up again. And then this time I was like, oh, this kid's kind of smart. And so it was very chill, very lax for like a year or two after that before we kind of started more regularly dating. And it started open. There was never a commitment of like monogamy ever because we were long distance still at that time. Mm -hmm. And we had a dom puppy relationship. So it wasn't boyfriends. Oh no, no, I called you daddy the very first time. Yeah, you did. <laughs> which so I wasn't was, quite happy about. Uh, no, but, but look at now, look at us now. I acquiesce. Look at us now. Look at us. Look at us. Look at us. Huh? Who would have thought? Not me. Which leads us to our next question from Mikkel who asks, how do you make your monogamous traditional marriage work? Well, you see, we always leave space for Jesus within the bed. Are they talking about ours or theirs? Because we don't have one. <laughs> we were always open and very chill about it from the get go. So when it finally turned into, do, are we boyfriends? Like a year later, we were kind of like, oh, I guess. And that's kind of how we've gone through our relationship in a lot of ways. So it's been very relaxed and has led us to never have expectations devastatingly broken, but always led us to have conversations about things before we really got into anything too serious. Yeah, so we never talked about having monogamy. Because we were both coming out of long-term relationships, we were both very kinky and open. And we learned from our previous relationships, as you do from most breakups, that monogamy was not for us and that we needed a bit of openness to not only make sure that our, our different kinks were managed and met, but that we realized you're not gonna get everything sexually from one person for us because we were ethical non-monogamous. Especially if you have a lot of kinks. One person isn't gonna be able to give you all of those kinks for the most part. So many kinks. So many kinks. So many kinks. So, many kinks. so little time. And within the thread, there were lots of congratulations. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Trust me. I need a few more pats on my back. <coughs> Which leads us to the next question from Drone X515. Has there been a shift in your kink dynamic slash play over the years? If so, what have you found is the best way navigating these changes? First part of that question, absolutely. Mm -hmm. When we first started out, it was a lot of kink play with each other that was puppy and bondage. You tried some impact play and quickly learned that, that was yeah, not my thing. Yeah, he wasn't into impact play. <laughs> Who knew? Um, the other thing was, I didn't know you were into hypnosis at the beginning. And so as you developed that fetish, I allowed for you to go explore that. It's not something I have an interest in doing and don't actually have the skill level to do. Well, and to that, I was not into hypno when we first met. There's mm. a lot of kinks that developed over time for both of us together, but us separately, because we do live actively sexual lives, but sometimes with other people. And for me, it was, when it comes to navigating the second part of this question, was having constant communication and conversations about, hey, I might be into this. I'm gonna try this with so-and-so, who you know from here. And having those conversations, that was the best way to navigate for us, was being very clear about expectations, wants, needs, and if we had new kinks that popped up, like mm -hmm. you, you come out with your partner so many times about different things, you learn through the relationship that you have. And I actually tried Hypno to see what it was that you were so into, and I get what you're into, it's just not what I'm into. And, you know, nothing really happened in those sessions, but... Uh, you're a good boy. Do you, oh, thank you. Do you mind uh, just getting me, you know, making me some macaroni on the stove? No, because all my dishes are dirty. <laughs> do you mind cleaning your dishes? <laughs> So to answer that question, we have just discovered new things and discuss it with each other as we do. And this one kind of goes hand in hand with that last question from Star Blackwood who asks, you typically have people who have been together for a long time needing and wanting to add spice into the love life and reignite the relationship. But what does spicing it up look like for kinky couples? No shade to either of us. Appreciate the, the lack of shade. I don't know, for us, it's not so much like a, I think people level up their relationships from like, super chill vanilla and they get spicier in some cases but for us we were always kind of spicy so we just we have to make it sweeter now i play with new people oh okay <laughs> sour sweet and i don't say that in a mean way no 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 no. i, I play with more experienced kinksters who have different levels of knowledge in kink and that spices it up not necessarily something that we have to spice up. That is an interesting question though, because like we're, we're almost working in reverse sometimes. We learn things about each other all the time through like silly quizzes and questions that we ask through our podcast. Yes, actually. And like, <laughs> no, but I, I enjoy that. It keeps, it keeps the relationship fresh. And like, we get to learn about each other, which is nice to do even nine well, years later. You're welcome. 
No, you're welcome. <laughs> Compromise! <laughs> Sporty Pup asks, how does the puppy saddle up to the pony? Well, let me go ahead and get some <laughs> gear. Saddle up's just fine. That's enough horsing around. Let's get to the next question, which comes from Peanut, who asks, what would you say is the most important thing that you've learned about yourself? About myself? In this relationship, I've learned that you don't have to raise your voice to get a point across. In my last relationship, we yelled a lot. Uh, and how much more I like that. So I've learned that about myself. And I've learned how to accept the fetish and kinks that I am, and you never shame me for any of them. And so that gives me the freedom to do that. I've learned that I'm not always right. Surprising, I know. Yes, do you have something to say? No, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> I've learned when to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> I learned being wrong is okay. Like having conversations with your partner, it's not about blame, it's not about being right or wrong. Just sometimes you gotta have a proper communication that doesn't feel judgmental. I feel statements work wonderfully, but I also have learned about like the values that I care about within a relationship, more so than just like focusing on the negative stuff or focusing on bad stuff that's happened to me that day. You have to focus on like the good things and what you value about your relationship. Ditto, what did he say? <laughs> Another loving congrats from DB, but also a follow-up of why don't you live together? Ooh, let's have oh, this conversation. Oh, are we gonna unpack that? Absolutely. Well, first of all, packing and unpacking your boxes multiple times to move in with someone, so exhausting. Uh-huh. It's because we got nice lats, bro. We got those. What are you talking about? Living apart together, or a lat, is what they're called. Oh, jeez. And there's something that is, what? What do you mean, oh, jeez, that's that what we do. That was a stretch. Ah. <laughs> Usually within a relationship, a giant milestone is like moving in together, but we've always lived pretty separate, and we've lived apart together, which is this growing thing, according to Forbes, especially the last couple years with COVID, where partnerships not only live in separate spaces, but they have their own autonomy in their space, and then they still have the support, the love, and the connection and relationship with someone else. There's even people that are married who live apart, but together. And I snore. But some people do do it for financial reasons, but we do it because we can't stand each other. No, it's because you snore. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but especially during COVID, when I think a lot of relationships were going under a lot of heavy tension because people lived together. On top of each other. We had our own spaces, we had our own work environments, because you shoot content here and I shoot and stream at home. Mm -hmm. So like that helped us to have normalcy. And then we have each other's places if one of them's messy or if we needed like an outdoor space. And it kind of gave us our own working environments, but also our own play environments, but also just our own environments to feel normal and come back to, which I think is a normal, healthy thing that people in relationships need. They need space every once in a while. Space. And I think of your house as an extension of my house. Same. Yeah. So why didn't you clean my dishes? Oh, okay. But it works for us, and mm -hmm. it doesn't work for everyone, but it, it suits our living styles and our working styles. The next one from Xander asks, how do you balance kinky versus non-kinky sex with one another, if any? Wait, non-kink was an option? I didn't know, okay, see, I was told it was kink or nothing. Kink or nothing, I had it on a shirt. Now it says Amp's daddy. Mm. Cause you fell for it. The balance just comes from like finding what you feel like. Cause we've had plenty of, of just loving non-vanilla sex. I was gonna say we do more vanilla sex with each other than we do kinky sex with each other. I would say. And Part of that is intimacy and cuddling, which is kind of the norm of traditional relationships. So that makes sense. But like you've got a hypno fetish, I have a huge impact play fetish. Those things don't mesh all together too well. Well, it could, but not for so us. So we explore those with other people yeah. and then have more of a loving traditional relationship with each other, except bondage. We, have, we both enjoy bondage. Next one from Rubber Drone Pup says, what is slash was your biggest doubt in the relationship or hurdle or all happy? Um, for me, I think it was the age gap. So mm -hmm. as I get older, you're, you're going into your prime, I'm leaving my prime. So we had generational issues. You have a whole different set of media that you watch and have watched growing up than I do. So some of those things didn't uh, mesh. That's true, but I feel that we've been able to share a lot of things there through those age gaps. You have an entire list of movies that I'm probably halfway through 
that, that you think all queer people should watch. And I have comics and video games and shows that I share with you, like Mean Girls and other references, that keep you hip and fresh. If I don't fall asleep, yes. <laughs> and I've got the better references that you guys all know, while Daddy has some really cool ones that we reference every so often. So yes, we do have different taste in entertainment, is Love what I think you're trying to marriage. say. <laughs> Love, Love American style. Marriage. But I would say the biggest hurdle for me was probably navigating Polly at the very beginning of our relationship. Oh yeah. Because while we were both very aware of what Polly was and how it worked, you don't always get to live the real world experiences that come with actually having relationships with complex people that you know, ebb and flow. It's easy to read a book, it's easy to understand concepts, but then living it out with actual humans that live and breathe and function differently, um, very, that was probably the biggest hurdle. Yeah, I learn best from life experience and unfortunately, we definitely <laughs> made some mistakes, yeah. um, which you tend to do, but we've also learned from them. Yeah, and we're not perfect, but like the relationship that we have is the relationship that we love and we've learned to, to navigate the best way for us because mm -hmm. it's a relationship. Mm -hmm. Do one of these. Great. Ooh, Polly related question. Frida Nap asks, have you ever vetoed each other's potential play slash scene partners? Vetoed? Baloney! No, but I think there are people that we both agree are not good for our orbit. There's so much space! True. Yes. Yeah. As far as polys and whatnot, we have people that orbit regularly, like a little planet in our lives, which we love and we know how to navigate with. And then sometimes little asteroids come in and they're gonna hit you, but then we change the orbit a little bit and we say, no, 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 no. 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 It's more so being conscious and watching out for each other. Uh -huh. As our family grows, we just have to make sure that everyone's staying safe and, and feeling comfortable. And sometimes that does come with me like, uh, I don't think we should play with that person. You know? Yeah, if you had, if you were disapproving of someone, I definitely would put the brakes in the halt. And I would definitely tell you. No, actually you wouldn't, I don't think. I think what? you would tell me that they're not your favorite person, but you would let me have that decision. That's fair. And I. I how am I gonna say this? I absolutely agree with that, that's mm -hmm. true, because I would never want to get in the way of you learning mm -hmm. something, but also, you don't take well to me trying to tell you not to do something. That's true, I mean, I'll I wanna that. do it more. Exactly. <laughs> and while I don't want you to end up hurt, sometimes you do have to learn those lessons firsthand, because I can't tell you that. So vetoed, not outright, but been consciously conversational about it, absolutely. And I think that that's normal to want to look out for your partner, even if they're gonna do something that they shouldn't. <laughs> Sounds very pointed. Why is there stocks in WD-40 in here? <laughs> Next question. Oh, okay. You sure you don't want to unpack that more? Yeah, no, I'm good. Okay. Next question from Pup Benji asks, what was the first step to developing a relationship? I think the first, uh, I think it was text messaging. Uh, you came off as intelligent at first. And then... Uh, we, at we... first? <laughs> See, so, some of us still listen. Some of us still listen. Took you a second, though. It took no. you a second. Mm -hmm. And then we arranged for a visit, and you came out to visit me. And I think that's where we first had our real connection, and that's what we call our anniversary. Yeah. You communicate, you hopefully set boundaries, you see each other, you build a rapport, and you just kind of navigate it. You, you, you dance through that relationship. I think going into something with too many expectations, you're going to end up in failure. Yeah, I, I literally had no expectations of this. I didn't think it was gonna last. I thought it was just a fling. Um, you said you were a puppy just here to make me happy and that's what you've always done. And Aww. here we are, nine years later. And I've been playing the long game. You have. <laughs> Here's a great one for any budding relationships. Comes from Luna who says, congratulations to you both. Thank Thanks. you. And then goes on to say, how do you both handle conflict when it pops up? Do you follow the never go to bed angry with each other rule? No, because we sleep apart. <laughs> <laughs> no, there have been times where we've had discussions that didn't end great uh -huh. and we need a minute, but then we will call or talk. And I don't think we've ever gone to bed angry as no. much as just wanting to, to make up for it the next day. And we usually, well, I don't think we ever go to bed angry. I don't know that I No, have. I can't remember a time. I do remember us having a conflict recently and I had to leave. Um, but I felt so terrible about it that I had to come back and talk it through with you. Yeah, and I think that's because we're in a relationship and we always kind of know, even when we're disagreeing on something, that we're not doing it to be mean and we're not trying to, trying to upset our partner. Like, we're in a relationship together because we trust each other and we know that we're always looking out for each other. And even if we think we know what's right, 
we might be wrong. And it, it's, you know, it's just the openness to, to learn when we're wrong. I love that you're so open about that. That's really helped. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you're not wrong. <laughs> I know! People break up because something's not working or it's not manageable for both the people to compromise and come together on things. I think that we've always known that the compromise is there and sometimes it takes longer than others for us to get there, but at the end of the day, we're always looking out for each other. And we always know that even if we're not always the happiest about how something went, we're not trying to, to fuck each other over, you know? And as comes with love and marriage, a question about marriage from Many Chicken Sage who says, are you married or would you want to get married in the future? Um, I probably would, but not for romantic reasons. It would be for financial reasons. If we bought property together, retirement uh, issues, that... medical. Uh, I, I think a lot of monetary. people confuse marriage with the romanticism of it, and especially gay men when it became legal without realizing that it is a legal binding document. Baloney! I think that some people romanticize it more than others. Mm -hmm. That's fair. And while gay marriage, let's go gays, come on, La Dolla Beans, like I'm always supportive and here for that, but it's not something that we need for us um, to, to show that we love each other and we're in a loving relationship that works. And I'm not, I'm not knocking anyone who's gotten married. Um, I think it's a wonderful institution for people who love each other. I'm just saying don't jump into it so quickly because you're in love with someone just realize it's a long game. And I've been playing the long game. You have. I think you can continue to love someone without the marriage part. And clean their dishes. Go. Love and marriage, <laughs> dirty. No, no, I'm, that was in the, now the compromise. <laughs> and last but not least, after love and marriage comes babies. And this question from Patty Cakes asks, not meant to pry, but do you see yourselves as having children together and Part two, do you have any advice for people who do want a traditional family and also want to be part of the kink or poly community? Okay, so part one, kids? Kids, <laughs> not in the cards for me. And as a matter of fact, our last partner wanted kids. <laughs> I'm too old at this point to have kids. And he already acts like a child and I don't want to take care of two kids. See, there you, go. there you go. If you have a baby, we won't be the baby anymore. Part two to that though is a bit more complicated and it goes, how do you have a traditional relationship? but also be part of King Polly. There's certain pieces you gotta kind of keep in boxes that you don't unbox when the traditional family parts are around. So, and then as far as having a family and being kinky, I think that is entirely up to the parents how they wanna raise their kids yeah. and what they wanna expose their kids to. You wanna make sure that you're not sharing too many details. Like, I don't talk about my kink sex life with my parents. Yeah, and you don't wanna know about your parents' sex life. It's very much like, be respectful to your family, whatever that looks like to you, but be age appropriate with how you talk about things and be conscious of how your actions can affect someone who is developing and still at a young age. Of course, you can teach someone when it comes to poly like that you love many people, but you also can't really explain kink in a concise way all the time to kids. Yeah, and I think it's also a matter of how you uh, broach topics. So if kids are asking about something that's kink related, if you do it in a negative way, they're gonna have a negative connotation of it. And if you do it in a positive way, it shows them that it's okay to talk about sex, but that doesn't mean you can't still be like, but let's not talk about that with our, you know, our, our friends at school. Like these are conversations that you have with, with your parents. You know, it, it's how you approach it with no shame because that does a lot of trauma on people. Actually, as a teenager, as an 18 year old, I moved in with my father and his wife and they weren't used to having a teenager. So they set a curfew and they told me the curfew was if you would stay out past midnight, if you're gonna come home before midnight, please call because we might be having sex <laughs> and we don't want you walking in on us. And they were very upfront about that and they weren't shamey about that. And there was many a times that I sat in the driveway at 11.30 because I didn't want to go find a payphone to see if I'd come home. Boundaries work both ways. <laughs> so picture it, a lovely autumn day in, was it Sicily? <laughs> Where we didn't officially meet, but we hopefully gave you guys some really good advice. I don't know, I, I, I feel like whenever we talk about our relationship, people glean onto these little facts and like, oh my God, what a great idea. Or, oh my God, you guys do that too. 
talking about your relationship openly sometimes gives other people that permission to adventure and find their openness in their own relationship. And that being said, we're not saying our relationship is the way you should have your relationship. Nah. It's different for every personality and person out there. It's just how we do it and how it works for us. But whether you're living apart together or getting a U-Haul and moving in, always have a safe word. And today's safe word is... Ambiguity. Okay, do you have to be able to say ambiguity? Ambiguity. There's like that weird like... Ambiguity. You could get together, watch this video, and then leave a comment down below what you uh, thought of the video. Or if you want to do something together, you could ring that bell together and you might be notified of our next one. But regardless, thanks for being part of our family and subscribing, and we will talk to you next time. Bye! Bye. And hey, here's your reminder, there's no sponsor on this video, so go check out thesafewordshop.com for all your holiday needs. The last day for some merch while you can. But otherwise, there's, there's always merch on there, and it's a great way to support the channel. So here's some free content thanks to the channel. Thank you for supporting us. Safewordshop.com, ah! But what is the unhip gift for nine years? <laughs> like linen and cloth and- <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, that's not as fun. No. 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 Although you do like underwear. I'm not wearing any underwear right now, what do you mean? <laughs>